tonight. I want you all to ask yourselves this one question. How many days in a year do you arrive home completely burnt out, stressed, completely tired, and the only thing you can think of is going to sleep? So you're very tired, you're extremely stressed. How often does that happen to you? Would you say that happens once every couple of months? <laughs> Maybe not. Once every month? Once every few weeks? At least once a week? More than once a week. Well, over time, over the centuries, um, I believe our society has accustomed itself to something I call the age of pragmatism, which means, in other words, that all we do is extremely fast-paced and we have no time to think about what we do. All the time we're doing something, we're working, we're stressed, we get tired, and we complete this monotonous cycle of working and getting stressed and getting tired all the time. So much so that I believe that perhaps in the following century, historians and sociologists will look back at the 21st century and call it David Frantism. But what exactly is Frantism, right? Because it's a random word I'm saying. So it is basically, according to Collins Dictionary, a fast or uncontrolled condition of non-stop activity. So in other words, just as holy sociologist Sigmund Bauman says um, in his book Click and Modernity, everything nowadays is indispensable. Everything nowadays is not meant to last. Everything is fast-paced, everything is made for us to get stressed. And that is basically, at least from my opinion, the core value of our society. And that raises a question, at least for myself, because when you get stressed all the time, as I have in many moments in my life, your body will act upon it. And a question comes up, and were we actually physiologically made for this routine, right? So when you think about it, your body was not made for this for being stressed all the time, being tired all the time, not sleeping, for like scrolling to your phone, talking to people, getting stressed. You were not made for this. So let's talk a bit about some of our routines. So here's Bob, right? Bob, he wakes up every day, he gets his phone, he looks at his emails, uh, his friends who are traveling, and then he goes, he eats something, he brushes his teeth, then he goes out. Um, to work, he turns on the radio, he starts listening to all these problematic things about you know, politics, the terrible economy, um, how something happened, some crime happened, and then when he gets to his work, or perhaps to school, maybe Bob's a student, maybe Bob is you or myself, he's a very stressed, like, oh my god, this happened to the economy, um, politicians are doing this, I'm stressed because this happened, I have to, um, I don't know, submit an essay for my teacher, I have these tests, so we're very stressed, right? Bob is extremely stressed when he gets to wherever he has to be. And then when Bob actually gets to his destination, he gets even more stressed. Because, for example, I'm a student, then he gets more homework, he gets more tests, he has stuff to do, he gets irritated at people. And then when Bob gets home, he looks a little bit like this. He's very tired, he's like, oh my god, I want to go to sleep, I'm so tired, I cannot cope with the world anymore. And of course, this happened to Bob today. But what if that terrible day for Bob actually happened the day after, for the whole week, two weeks, one month, two months, six months, a year, a lifetime? And unfortunately, that has become the life of many people. And at some point, it was my whole life until I realized that it doesn't work. Because at some point, Bob's body will tell him, I cannot deal with this. I was not made for this. So why don't we discuss a bit of the consequences of this routine Bob has, where he's always stressed and he can't do anything. So let me put my glasses on, because I'm actually very quite blind. So a disruptive surgical nervous system, what am I trying to say by that? Here right there, as you may know, um, our brain emits different waves at every stage of our days. So when we wake up, we have a certain type of waves, and then when we're, for example, writing something, we have another type of waves. So, as you recall, Bob woke up in the morning and started looking at his phone. 
oh, this happened on Instagram, my friend has a new girlfriend, and I have three emails with my teacher because I didn't submit my essay, I'll get depressed. And as that happens, um, Bob's brain switches from this way right here to this. And if that doesn't make sense, let me explain it to you. Here, the delta waves are the ways your brain emits when you're calm, when you just woke up, you're like, okay, what's my name, what am I doing here? And when you get your phone, first thing in the morning, you're bombarding your brain with information. So it basically goes from here up to here in milliseconds. So your brain starts to stay completely disrupted, like, boom. So at a second, your brain thinks you're sleeping, and a millisecond later, you're being bombarded with information. And that's like that. You start your brain, you start, you start your day disrupted. So your central nervous system, your brain is already collapsed at what, 5 30 a.m. in the morning. So, for example, still talking about your eyes and of course about blue lights on your phones. This is a small diagram of your eye. As you may see, it has certain structures such as the cornea and the lens that protect it from many types of light. However, the light that is emitted from our eye from our phone's blue light goes straight into the retina. How far, right? UV light doesn't. Visible light doesn't, however, blue light does. And studies according to, for example, um, UC Davis, the University of UC Davis, has shown that using your phone in the morning, consuming so much blue light will affect, for example, your retinal cells, will increase um, many diseases related to the eyes, such as eye strain, and that is not very good for you. So, of course, if you use your phone at some point, that will not happen to you. But what if you wake up and spend your whole day looking at your phone, getting stressed, using your phone, and blue light, information, blah, blah, blah. At some point, your eyes will develop problems, such as I do. For example, I have no idea whatsoever of your face right now, because as I realized, my myopia developed the more more I use my phone. So now I cannot see you, but now I can, right? And more than that, this is something I had to cope with for a long time, which is chronic stress. But what is exactly chronic stress, right? Well, stress often happens in the following manner. There is this thing your body does called the fight or flight response. It is basically the augmentation of hormones such as adrenaline and cortisol for your basic survival. So back centuries, centuries ago, let's say you were, ch you were being chased by a tiger a long, long, long time ago, your body would activate those hormones so it would survive. However, we still have those hormones nowadays, and when we have a problem, disactivate. And that's normal, it's okay. But what if you're always stressed, and those hormones are present all the time, right? What effect does that happen in the body? There's many. As Gabor Mata states, he's a Canadian physician, um, chronic stress and having such high levels of cortisol and adrenaline in your body will inflammate you completely. They will impair immunity, um, change your body chemistry, and will basically make you more prone to diseases, getting you more tired, and it's terrible. And of course, if that is not enough to concern you, let me tell you that chronic stress is related to hair loss. So, I don't think anyone of you will lose your hair, right? Okay, so those are some of the effects of our frenetic habits, right? But now the question is, how can we change? Okay, we know what the problem is, but how can we change it, right? What can we actually do to become an improved society and stop this frenetic medicine, right? As Mahatma Gandhi states, if you want to change the world, start with yourself. And what does that actually mean? It's just a phrase, right? Well, that means that small steps will result in big results, right? So if you want to change your habit, you want to stop looking at your phone every day, you want to stop being stressed, you need to learn how to do that little by little. And that's what I think you should do. So I'll give you some examples of this from what I do to go and get over this for any easy, right? So for example, know your language, right? Learn how to say no. So I know you have a lot to do. You have a lot of work, you have people asking you for help, you know, their homework, you have tests, you have extracurriculars, just as I do as a student. Know your language, learn how to say no. If you cannot do something, say, I'm not ready for this, I cannot work on this right now, I need to rest. So learn your body's limits, learn what you can do 
and where you cannot do. Because of course it's normal to once in a while have these phases, right? Of, okay, I have a lot to do, now I'm calmer, I have a lot to do again, and I'm calmer. But if you never ever respect your limits, you will always be in this phase of I have a lot to do and I need to get everything done. And if I don't get it done, my life will end. And this, of course, uh, results in all the problems I stated previously. More than that, positivism. Yes, it's very good shape. But you must learn to see things in a positive manner. So for every problem, there's a solution, right? There's an outcome, an opportunity to it. So instead of like sitting down and saying, ah, I have to do this, I have to do the other, this is terrible. What if we sit down and think, okay, what can I do? What can I actually do to surpass this problem? What can I actually do to make sure that I can become a better version of myself, right? And more than that, accept uncertainty. And what do I mean by accept uncertainty? I mean that there's a lot of things we can control, but most of them we cannot. So learn how to navigate your life in that manner. Learn how to sit down and accept that despite all of our difficulties, we must learn to keep on, be steady, and make sure that we respect our limits, stay positive, and most importantly, not allow ourselves to succumb to frenetic and negative habits such as that. So that's due to the cause of stress, and all of those terrible situations, right? So, let's keep in mind that only you can define the way we can write your story. So, you have the power, you have the power position to do whatever you want to do, whatever you feel like you must do. So, it's up to you, it's literally up to you to start to respect your limits, to learn what is right for you, and most importantly, become the best version of yourself. So, let's try and be more like Bob here, by respecting your limits, and becoming the best version of ourselves without being frenetic. Thank you.